I've analyzed every single verb tense question from College Board's list of public questions, and I've seen eight types of verb tenses that are used as the correct choice nearly every single time. I'll explain how you can identify them, when to use them, and most importantly, which one to use. But before I do, take a look at this verb tense question. After looking at this question for less than 10 seconds, I spotted the correct answer. How? Well, for these verb tense questions, where it asks for the choice that conforms to the conventions of standard English and has multiple choices with the same verbs but different tenses, so some are in the past, present, and future, you always have to check if you can identify if the multiple choice is single or plural, and the way you can do that is to use the they-it test. Let me show you what I mean. Choice A. Do you say it is studying or do you say they is studying? You say it is studying. They is studying just sounds completely wrong. So when you use it, it means it is single. When you use they, then it is plural. Choice B. It has studied or they has studied. It has studied. So single again. Choice C. They study or it study. They study makes more sense so it is plural. Choice D. They studies or it studies. It studies, so this choice is singular. So when you're able to identify all of them, then it is a single and plural question, and you will pick the choice that is unlike the others, in this case, choice C. If you cannot identify all of them, however, you can just use the eight grammar rules that I'm going to explain. Stick around to the end where I'll show you the framework I use to easily keep track of which tense rule I should use. The first tense rule is the most common or most basic one, but many people don't know when it is exactly used. Here's an example. In recent years, economists around the world have created new tools that quantify the overall well-being of a country's citizens. Economists in India, for example, use an ease of living index. This tool, blank, economic potential, sustainability, and citizens' quality of life. So you can see a fact is presented here. So it says this tool, blank, economic potential, sustainability, and citizens' quality of life. So this is a fact, and whenever you have a fact, a current truth, or a habit presented, we use tense rule number one, which is the present simple. Present simple is basically used for facts or habits. The structure of present simple is basically the standalone verb, so it's just gonna be the verb in its most basic form, which in this case is the word measures, so choice A. By the way, you'll sometimes see some signaling words such as now, usually, or always. The next tense rule is also commonly used, however, there are lots of students that get tricked by the question format and therefore get the question wrong. Let's see a question. American abstract artist Richard Serra, blank, his installation is to make passers-by keenly aware of how one's movements are affected by the physical features of one's environment, assembles large-scale steel plates into sculptures that dominate the outdoor spaces they occupy. You might have noticed that this middle part is actually extra. So if you try to read the text again without that middle part, it will naturally flow and it will still make sense. So let's see. It says, American abstract artist Richard Serra assembles large scale steel plates into sculptures that dominate the outdoor spaces they occupy. Since the middle part could easily be removed and it still made sense, it is a relative clause question. And in relative clause questions, there's going to be a noun or a noun phrase. So in this case, it's American abstract artist Richard Serra. This is a noun phrase. Then there's going to be a comma. So there's supposed to be a comma here in the blank. And then there's the extra information, which is this red part over here. Then another comma, so you can see a comma is here. And then the rest of the sentence, so this part over here. So you can see that there's supposed to be a comma in the blank, so there's supposed to be a comma in the correct choice. Choice A does not have a comma, choice B and C both do, choice D does not have a comma. So we can immediately cancel choice A and D out because there is no comma. So now we're left with choice B and C. So after the comma, they both have a verb, which means that the verb came after the first comma in the relative clause questions. And 99% of the time, when this happens, we will use the second verb tense rule, which is present participle. Present participle describes ongoing or background actions. So this middle part over here is just a background action. That's why we we're supposed to use the present participle choice. And present participle is composed of a verb and ing. So in this case, that would mean choice C would be correct. Also, present participle usually comes in the form of a relative clause or after a comma. Several advantages, the ability to react strongly with chip components to avoid interference from other waves and to be confined within tiny circuits, blank, acoustic waves is a promising alternative to electric waves for transmitting data on computer chips. As a result, researchers are invested in developing more acoustic wave-based chips.
Okay, so whenever you see two dashes in the text, the sentence in between is just extra or background information. So if you swap the dashes for commas and you read it again, you'll see that this is like a relative clause sentence. However, you'll not pick the choice that shows verb plus ing. So in this case, choice B or choice C. This is because the blank or the verb is after the second comma, not the first one. If it was after the first one, that would mean it's a part of the background information. So we could use the verb plus ing, so the present participle. However, in this case, the blank or the verb is after the second comma, not the first one. Therefore, you have to cancel out the extra sentence and read it again if you want more clarity. So it says several advantages have positioned or having positioned Acoustic waves is a promising alternative to electric waves for transmitting data on computer chips. So this has happened in the past. As a result, researchers are invested in developing more acoustic wave-based chips. So they are now invested in developing more of these chips. Meaning that this happened in the past, but is still important or still has effect on the now. So we will use tense rule number three which is present perfect. Present perfect is used when something happened in the past but is still important right now. And its structure is basically have or has plus the past verb. So in this case, that would mean choice A is correct because it says have and then the past tense verb. Here's another question which uses the shortest tense and one of the most common tenses. In 1903, environmentalist John Moyer guided President Theodore Roosevelt on a scenic sprawling trip through California's Yosemite Valley. Upon returning from the three-day excursion, Roosevelt blank to conserve the nation's wilderness areas, a vow he held up for his remaining six years in office. Okay, so we can see that over here there is a completed past action. And whenever there is a completed past action, we use tense rule number four, which is past simple. And again, we said past simple is used for complete past actions. A structure is basically the past tense verb. So in this case, that would mean choice B is correct. Also, sometimes you'll see some signaling words such as in 1903 in this case, or for example, last year or anything that has happened in the past or like any previous time frame. Let's move on to the next question. This one is not as easy as the previous one. Formed in 1967 to foster political and economic stability within the Asia Pacific region, the Association of Southwest Asian Nations was originally made up of five members, Thailand, the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. By the end of the 1990s, the organization blank its initial membership. So first it was made up of five members and then the number of members doubled. So whenever you see two things happen in the past but one happened before the other, you'll use tense rule number five, which is past perfect. Past perfect again is used when two things happen in the past but one happened before the other. Its structure is basically had plus the past verb which means in this case choice B would be correct and sometimes you'll see some signaling words such as by the time or by the end of or before so in this case it says by the end of the 1990s the organization had doubled its initial membership oh and by the way you can download the list of these eight verb tenses from our community and you can click the link below to join now next question Bonnie Barotti of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory blank data about Saturn's rings collected by the Cassini spacecraft when she made an interesting discovery. The tiny moons embedded between and within Saturn's rings are shaped by the buildup of ring material on the moon's surface. So she was doing something when another thing happened. And whenever this is the case, so when something is happening and then at the same time another thing happens, we use tense rule number six, which is past progressive. And past progressive is basically was there aware plus the verb plus ing, which in this case would mean choice D is correct. Also, you'll sometimes see signaling words such as when or while to show that you're supposed to use a past progressive verb. Nowadays, tug of war is usually seen as an informal game one might play at a picnic or in gym class. Surprisingly, the Olympic Committee once decided blank tug of war as an official Olympic event. Nations competed in the event at the Olympic Games from 1900 to 1920. So in the line after the blank, it shows the purpose or intent behind what they wanted to do. Therefore, you can use an infinitive multiple choice, which is tense rule number seven. Infinitives are used to show purpose or intent, and their structure is basically to plus verb, which means that choice D in this case would be correct.
A simple trick I use to know if I should use an infinitive or not is I ask myself, why did they decide to do something? In this case, to include tug of war as an official Olympic event. Whenever you can answer this question, that means you can select the infinitive multiple choice. Let me show you a much, much harder question. Working from an earlier discovery of charpentiers, chemist Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dodna, winners of the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, recreated and then reprogrammed the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria, blank, a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. So let's try to sound out all of the choices. So choice A is to forge. It says recreated and then reprogrammed the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria to forge a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. Then we have choice B, forging. It says recreated and then reprogrammed the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria forging a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. Okay, to some this also sounds correct. Choice C. Uh, forged. It says recreated and then reprogrammed the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria forged a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. Okay, so to sum this sounds right. So like you're now confused. All three of these choices probably sound correct to you. However, let's also check choice D. Recreated and then reprogrammed the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria and forging a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. So you might have noticed that most of these choices sound right. However, I can see that choice A says to forge. And whenever I have an infinitive multiple choice, immediately I ask myself, why did they decide to do something? Or in this case, why did they decide to recreate and then reprogram the so-called genetic scissors of a species of DNA cleaving bacteria? Why? To forge a tool that is revolutionizing the field of gene technology. So I was able to answer this question. I was able to answer the reason why they did something. So when I'm able to answer this question, that means I can use the infinitive multiple choice, which in this case is choice A. Moving on to the last question. However, stick around till the end where I'll show you the framework I use to easily keep track of which tense rule I should use. So this question is pretty easy. Let's take a look at it. It says, obsidian is a kind of volcanic glass formed when lava cools so quickly that the atoms inside it cannot arrange themselves in a crystalline structure. You blank more about the obsidian structure, which is classified as amorphous in a later chapter. We can see that we will learn about this later on, so in the future. And whenever we have something that will happen in the future, we use tense rule number 8, which is future simple. Future simple is used for actions that will happen later on. And the structure is pretty easy will plus verb so in this case choice c sometimes you'll see some signaling words such as tomorrow later or next year so in this case it says later now here's the framework i use to get these questions right the majority of the time now however i have a pdf in my free community that contains the tense rules the framework and more than 20 questions for you to solve so click the link below to join my free community or watch my next video where I solve 25 of those annoying transition questions and explain their meanings.